Hello everybody, Jake, your resident content cowboy here, yeehaw, and today is Monday. On Mondays we do tier lists, and on Wednesdays we wear pink. Today's tier list is going to be a little different because this is a different meta. Let's take a look at our tiers for today. We have the Zacian tier. We only have one Zacian around here. We're not friggin' Norse. We have our S tier, or A plus tier, or A tier, or B tier, which I don't even know what to say anymore. It's almost, Zacian is almost as bad as still having the B tier. Still got the B tier. We have our C tier and our Decidui Memorial tier. I'm going to kind of blaze through this a little quickly. And the reason I say that is because I think this meta is kind of difficult to parse out exactly where a lot of the mid tier Pokemon fall because it's completely dominated by a Pokemon that's going into the Zacian tier. Where are you, my sweet prince? Ah, Zacian. Uh, what's to be said about Zacian that hasn't already been said? This Pokemon is profoundly broken. It was bugged, and that was really, really bad. It's still amazingly broken. I believe it is still the most broken release they have ever put into the game. I think it's absolutely insane. And one of the tough things about putting together a tier list when you're ranking all of the Pokemon against each other is when you have one Pokemon who completely dominates the meta and dominates every match, it's kind of hard to parse out where a Pokemon like, let's say, Dragonite, uh, compares to a Pokemon like Zarina because no one's playing Dragonite and no one's playing Zarina and every match you're just trying to deal with this demon dog that is Zacian. As always, uh, this kind of particular tier list is just going to be broadly where these Pokemon fall inside the game. There could be a, a very separate tier list for full-on coordinated play and a very separate tier list for only solo play. This is a broad tier list about all of the Pokemon in the game, and I am going to give you some ideas as to why I put them where they put them, where they play best, and where where exactly they rank against Pokemon of a similar role. So for instance, if I put a Pokemon like Slowbro very high, let's say I put Slowbro on the S tier and I put a Pokemon like Crustal down in the D tier, it's not saying that Slowbro has more value than every other attacker that will be below it, or that Crustle has less value than every other attacker above it necessarily, but it does give an indication of where I think these two Pokemon stack up against each other, if that makes sense. That's honestly not even bad placement. That's about where I put those two Pokemon right now, to be fair. So let's begin. Zacian is an all-rounder, so let's start with our all-rounders this week. Let's go with Garchomp. I think Garchomp's doing pretty decent inside the game. It's either an A or B. It's actually doing a little bit better than it was. Into Zacian, I think it's horrible. So given that that's the meta that we're running into right now, I'm going to drop it down to the B tier because it's just terrible into Zacian. You don't want to be near that Pokemon. Some of the best things you can do to Zacian are stun it or at the same time just be far away from it while you're attacking it. Garchomp doesn't really allow that. I think it's pretty good. I think B is a fair placement for this Pokemon right now. Not doing too bad, and I think a lot of Pokemon are gonna find their way to the B tier. Machamp, I think Machamp edges out Garchomp a little bit. It's close. They're both very, very close. Um, what I like about Machamp is you have the ability to stun, and its Unite move is unbelievable. I also think it performs a little better than Garchomp in lane or path. Uh, Garchomp, you kind of need to put it in lane as well, which is a bit of a problem, but it doesn't do that terrible. Garchomp got a glow up a little while back, and it's not doing too bad. I think Machamp edges it out a bit, and they do have a similar role. Lucario right up there with Machamp. I think Lucario is still doing really, really well inside this game. Actually doesn't play too terribly into Zacian. I don't know if Extreme Speed would really be the way to go, but Power Up Punch Close Combat doesn't play too poorly into it, and it does very, very well in lane. You don't need jungle experience, which is nice, and that's kind of what a lot of these all-rounders give you. You don't need them in that central area to, to get a ton of value out of them. Lucario still doing very well. Charizard, terrible. Charizard's weird. It's not that Charizard is an instant loss or anything like that. It's just Charizard is so much worse than it used to be. I refuse to move it out of the Decidueye Memorial tier until they fix this Pokemon a little bit. It's just such a disaster what happened to Charizard. I'm mad about it every day. <laughs> Let's see, who's next? Where's another all-rounder here? Zarina is a weird one. I'm gonna put Zarina B. The fact of the matter is, this Pokemon fell off so unbelievably hard, no one plays this thing, and it might even be worse than B outside of 
people who are insanely good with it. If you're insanely good with Serena, don't worry about you know the, the placement here. But in general, I think Zarina is in one of the worst spots in the game it's ever been in. And it's really sad because it's a cool Pokemon, but they gutted it. It was after Worlds, it got so much play during Worlds, and they, they made it so squishy now that I feel like it's just so easy to punish, which has never really been Zarina's thing. Dragonite, another one that I'm gonna put B. I've been having a lot of luck with Dragonite in general when I've been playing it, but I haven't played a ton of it into Zacian. The fact of the matter is, I don't think a lot of these Pokemon fare super well into Zacian, so I think B is a fair place to put it. And this is one of the issues with the, the meta right now, is it's so heavily dominated by 10 Pokemon that there are a lot of ones where you just have to go, yeah, B. If someone goes, it's C, I go, yeah, you're fine, it's C. And they go, it's A, it's like, I get, maybe. But the fact of the matter is there's just so many Pokemon that are kind of middle of the road that aren't getting a ton of play, and Dragonite's one of them. Sword, I would put into this category as well. I, I've seen it get used somewhat competitively, and it definitely has some value, but looking at all of these all-rounders together, B tier is a tier of solid Pokemon. They, they're they not going to be the best thing. They're not gonna be the worst thing. In the hands of a really good pilot, these things could make some incredible maneuvers. They could do loop-de-loops, -loops, if you will, do a barrel roll. But at the same time, I just, I don't know, I'm not seeing a ton of value out of all of them. Maybe Aegislash is one tier higher, maybe. I'm not really in love with it. Azumarill, I think, is actually hurting right now. It's probably one of the weakest all-rounders in the game outside of Charizard. I don't know what they did, but just the small nerf to its water pulse, and all of a sudden, I actually think this Pokemon is a bit of a liability as you uh, you know move towards near the end of the game and things like that. It's nice that it evolves at level four. It got some buffs a while back, and that brought it out of being one of the worst Pokemon in the game, but I actually think, I mean, I might even put it C, if I'm being honest. I'm just, I feel like it's getting very, very little value in the game right now. Maybe, I'd, maybe I'll leave it C. We'll see if I change my mind on that. I rarely do. Uh, next all-rounder, Buzzwolves, fine. Buzzy Boy is doing okay. You see it somewhat competitively, which is kind of cool. It does well at level five. It actually has a lot of uh, crowd control moves, so stuns, knockups, things like that. Mainly knockups. You get to knock up, you get a you know a stun and a hold with leech life, and then you get the pick up and move with superpower. It actually has some value to it, but also just like a lot of these all rounders, like it's good, but I don't think it's gonna set the world on fire or anything like that. You could have a really good buzz game though. Titar, on the other hand, really good all rounder. This, this, if it wasn't for Zacian, this would be S. This kind of was S. It's still really, really good, but it's just... When you compare it to a Pokemon who is just as good as Tyranitar and doesn't need any of the experience to do its job, like, what have they done? So I'm going to put it A+, plus for now. It's still a really amazing Pokemon, and once Zacian gets nerfed, I could definitely see this Pokemon being higher. It, I mean, it's really, really great. But right now, it's just completely outclassed, I feel like, by a Pokemon who literally can be good at level 0. Uh, let's see, Scissor Scyther. This tier list doesn't distinguish between Scissor Scyther. I'm going to put him B. I think Scyther's probably closer to A. And strangely enough, Scissor has been getting absolutely dominated after it got nerfed. I thought the nerfs to Scissor were small, but that Pokemon seems to lose all the time. Its win rate is abysmal right now. I don't, I'm, I'm really shocked. I think a few things that have happened. Uh, Tyranitar really hurts a Pokemon like Scissor. Zacian just absolutely destroys it. And in general, we have a few mages who are doing some pretty good work. And with this Pokemon, if you can't get next to the enemy, you're in a little bit of trouble. But yeah, Scissor's also hurting a little bit. I'd say Scissor probably closer to C, Scyther probably closer to A, but no one's playing Scyther right now, mainly because it's banned in tournaments. Let's take a look here. Urshifu, I, th I still think is really strong. I'm gonna put both Urshifus probably up in the A plus tier. Um, even even though they've gotten nerfs, I think they're both still incredible Pokemon. The Secure on Wicked Blow is amazing, and the Water Bear is still very, very good. However, the Water Bear is just a worse Zacian. That's all it feels like to me is like, oh, you can chase people to a tier two and do tons of damage? Boy, I wish it was Zacian, you know? I personally don't. I wish Zacian was thrown into a volcano, but in general, uh, these two Pokemon I think are still doing very, very good inside the game right now. Any other all-rounders that I missed? Probably. I always miss some as the roster gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and you know, 
I was just talking about defenders. So let's start talking about defenders. I do think Slowbro is an S tier, and I actually think Crustle is more of a C tier Pokemon. It's close to D, it really is, but I think people are sleeping on some of what Crustle's kit can do. The fact of the matter is most people who play Crustle are absolutely turbo griefing your games and they're doing everything they can to not support your team. It actually has some pretty good defensive qualities, uh, but it could use some love for sure. Slowbro, on the other hand, has one of the only counters to a crazy Pokemon like Zacian. In fact, it's sort of the ultra carry counter it has a unite move that shuts down any pokemon in the game so if you need to shut down something that's unbelievably broken you've got yourselves a slow bro i think it's one of the best defenders if not the best defender in the game right now let's take a look snorlax i think he's doing pretty good doing pretty good actually is annoying for zashian i think an a tier is a very fair place to put this pokemon some might say a plus but given that it actually kind of hurts uh without a good team around it. I think A is about as high as I can put it. It's a it's a really solid defender choice. Doesn't carry super hard, but outside of that, it's a really solid defender. Blastoise actually doing extremely well in the game right now. It might even be closer to A plus than A. They're both really good, but you know, the thing about Blastoise is we're seeing Blastoise in a ton of different varieties, a ton of different situations, and it seems like it finds value pretty much everywhere it goes. You can play it as more of a sort of uh, support CC stun tank. You can play it as more of a damage dealer, and Blastoise is actually doing really, really well. Also, if you put a comfy collar around it, it's pretty solid. There are a lot of Pokemon that are pretty solid with a comfy collar, to be fair. Let's see, our next defender on the list is going to be Greedon. Greedon's a weird one. I'm gonna put it A. Uh, my, my mouse was like, no, it's A+. I'm gonna put it A. I think Greedon's always good. I think it has a very, very low pick rate, high win rate all the time. If you're good with Greedon, you're really good with Greedon. If you're bad with Greedon, you're really bad with Greedon. It is a difficult Pokemon to be good with, but in general, it just uh, it's a harasser that creates a different environment inside of a match. If you're just looking for a team defender, though, it definitely feels like other Pokemon shine a lot more than this Pokemon. And you kind of need a real defender on your teams. That's that's the issue with Greedon, if there was one. That's the issue. Mamoswine, I'm putting A+. Plus. I think Mamo's amazing right now. I kind of think people are sleeping on Mamo, but to be fair, there's a reason for that, and it's slow, bro. Uh, Mamo is great. It's so strong. It's the stuns are amazing. I love this Pokemon. You do, you don't need to play it in center at all. You really don't need to play any defender in center area. Uh, I can't think of anyone that you would want to throw there. But in general, it just it feels like it does so well with so little. And you do, yeah, you don't need a lot to make this good. And that's what you want in a defender. Mamo's crushing it right now. Trevenant. All right, this might be the boldest part of my tier list, but I, I think these uh, buffs might have thrown Trevenant up into the S tier. I think it might be the new premier defender choice up there with Slowbro. Its Unite move isn't as good. However, I think you now have essentially not a single build for this Pokemon that's bad. Everything about this Pokemon is good. I really like Wood Hammer right now, and I think you can go Horn Leech or Pain Split, depending on the enemy team. I think it is a top, top, top tier defender. Again, I'm not comparing an S tier Trevenant with wherever I put Greninja on this tier list. They're very different Pokemon, but for a defender, I think it's unbelievably good. And I think the uh, the buffs it got was just an absolute massive glow up. This thing is crushing it right now. I think those are all our defenders, unless I'm missing one, which who knows, probably I am. Gudra is not out yet as a, as of this tier list, so I can't put on this list. But I think Gudra will also be very high because it's kind of unKOable. We'll see what that looks like once it comes out. Let's move on to, we'll stay in sort of the realm of tankiness, and I'm going to go to supporters right now. I think Wiggly's doing fine. I think B is probably fair. Someone could tell me, hey, it's actually a little closer to A with some of the buffs it got, but... I think it's still solid. What you have to understand about Wiggly is it's a supporter that you have to directly compare to other tanks inside the game. And I think Snorlax, Blastoise, Mamo, Slowbro, Trevenant, I think they all probably provide a little more value than Wiggly. Even though I think Wiggly is doing a lot better than it was, even just having its Unite move more often, I think is definitely beneficial here. So I don't think it's bad. I don't think the rollout buffs really help that much. I even saw the world champs playing the rollout build and I just, I don't think it provides enough value as the match goes on, but we will see. Perhaps more people will pick it up and uh, it'll kind of change. Uh, LD, I think LD's doing really good. 
A or A+, they nerfed it a little. I'll leave it A for now. But I think Eldegoss is a really good Pokemon. You fight at range, you heal at range, you shield at range, you fly up into the air and move enemies around and heal your allies with your Unite move. In general, I think LD's doing really, really well inside the game. I have to play it a little more with the nerfs. I haven't really seen where this most recent uh, meta has you know shifted its win rate but i think ld is really strong in fact you know what i honestly think it's a plus i think it's better than than a uh i'll have to see if the the nerfs hurt that much mime is a weird one mime's really weird i definitely think it's a but i feel like mime the more i play it i do feel like they've really shaved off some of the overpoweredness of mime and of course it definitely deserved it let's be fair this pokemon was crazy good mime is essentially a tank as well but it's sort of like an all-rounder almost like a special attack all-rounder tank it's a weird hybrid pokemon it's really good but i do think if you're looking for something for that defender role there are better choices right now and the power swap build seems to have gotten hurt pretty bad. Blissey, still really good. I'd put Blissey as an A-plus Pokemon. Maybe it's even S. Blissey's nuts. Um, yeah, Blissey's really, really good. Heals, shields. Unite move is crazy good. There's nothing wrong with having a Blissey on your team. I actually think maybe as a healer, there are some supporters that have kind of outpaced it, which is weird. But... Let's keep going. Hoopa, really good. A+. Plus. I think supporters in general are in a great spot. Hoopa's amazing. You can take hyperspace holes, you know, on repeat at this point. And uh, Phantom Force is also extremely good now that you don't have to target an enemy. Hoopa just got massive buffs, and it's doing great inside the game right now. Always happy to see a Hoopa on your team. You know, they, they're just really good. And they're great at big fights with their Unite move. Let's see. Our next supporter, Clefable. I think is doing freaking fantastic inside the game right now. The heals are nuts. Gravity or follow me are incredible, depending on what the enemy's doing. I think the kiss me build is fun, uh, but it's just total. I, I think it's cheese. It's like full on cheese. It's kind of like flail Snorlax right now. It's like fun, but let's face it. This is not why you have this Pokemon on your team. That being said, if you have a Moonlight Clefable on your team, you're in a great spot. You're just, you're loving life. Sableye. I'm going to put Sableye in the A tier. This might even be higher. Here's the thing. It's got a high win rate, and I think it actually does some really cool stuff. It's gotten nerfed from its, like, weird place. I kind of wish it was crazy again just to deal with Sashi, and I gotta be honest. But its knockoff build has been getting a lot of play. Now it is sort of this very, very... Um, it's a very sort of deliberate pick for lots of stuns onto the enemy. And I think there is some really good value to Sableye. But it's just hard to find what slot you would want to swap out for a Pokemon like this. Even though I think it's doing great, you just have to be careful that your team already has a defender. Your team probably already has a support. Maybe this would drop, you know, maybe you drop a healer for this. But boy, I'd rather have a healer on my team than have a Sableye on my team. So I think it's doing well, but it's in a very weird slot. And now we have Comfy. Okay. So where do you put a Pokemon like Comfy? Here's, here's the thought here. Okay, I'm going to set this in the S tier and let's talk about it. Okay, Comfy is by itself. If you are playing this game by yourself, this Pokemon is... You're really kind of completely up to the whims of your team. If your team is good, you will accentuate that and help your team win. If your team is bad, you will not find anyone to help and you will lose. What Comfy does, better than any other Pokemon in the game, better than Blissey, Clefable, really anything, is it makes sure that your crazy hyper carry Zacian or Water Bear or whatever, Tyranitar, that Pokemon is healthy and happy and can't get burst down in some of these big fights. And if you're able to do that, you've kind of taken a Pokemon with the, like Zacian, the highest win rate in the game, and you've given them the ability to not get KO'd. You've you take the most broken kit and you make sure that that broken kit can't get KO'd. And I think because of that, it's kind of the, one of the strongest choices in the game. And it doesn't take the highest skill level to play this Pokemon. So it's, it's always going to be tough. If your team's bad, this is as bad as your team. But if there are a few good members of your team, even one good member of your team, this thing is kind of broken. And it's always going to be the problem of Comfy. Right now, Comfy Zashin is just the most disgusting thing in the world. Those two together are unbelievable. Unless your Zashin's bad. 
and then there you go. That's how things work. And that's what's going on with Comfy. I don't really know anywhere else to put it because it is very, very team reliant. But that being said, if you have one good carry on your team and they know what they're doing, this Pokemon is unbelievable. I would highly recommend not playing this solo because you will get your freaking heart broken. However, if you're with a friend, whoo, it could be a mean one. All right, let's see. Uh, let's move on to speedsters. Attackers is our biggest category. We'll save them for last. Speedsters, Gengar, doing fine. It's fine. It doesn't do particularly well into Comfy right now, so I can't put it any higher than B. If you if you have a Comfy, it's really hard for a Dream Eater to do too much. And then Hex, it just feels like it's kind of beaten down by a few things. I think Gengar is doing okay, but nothing really to write home about. I'm not super impressed by it. Talon. I'm sorry, Talon. I don't know. You're just... Talon's like either D or C. It really needs some buffs. I don't know what they're doing with this Pokemon. It is not good enough right now. Talon is just so outclassed. I love it, but it's it's completely outclassed. Yes, you could be cracked with it. The thing about speedsters is they're all sort of in the realm of hyper carry Pokemon. They can get really, really fed and get some massive KOs. But in general, I just feel like Talon is completely outclassed inside this game. Absol's doing just fine. I think B is a fair place to put Absol. It runs into some tough comps when things are really, really tanky on the enemy team. But you know, in general, I think uh, I think Absol's doing just fine. Zorora, Zeraora, no. Zeraora is one buff away from being meta, but it has not gotten that buff. Zeraora is one of the worst carries inside the game. Yes, you can carry with it. I think the thing people, the thing I think people don't understand is, again, I'm comparing this to other Pokemon for this role. And when you compare it to other Pokemon for this role, sort of a hyper carry speedster, it's without question one of the bottom of the barrel Pokemon uh, in this area, for sure. I, I can't recommend enough not really going with Zeraora. It's so rough. Uh, but if its leveling got changed, if it got some buffs, all of a sudden we could see a very different Zeraora. Let's see, another speedstery Pokemon. We've got Dodrio. I think Dodrio's doing really well. It might be A. I, I do think Zacian, Comfy. I think there's a lot that actually really messes with Dodrio, Dodrio inside the meta right now. Blastoise is annoying for it. Mamo is annoying for it. Trev, Slowbro, Comfy, Zacian. All these high tier Pokemon are really, really annoying for Dodrio. That being said, it's still a very good Pokemon. I don't think uh, it's fallen off that hard, but it's uh, it, it does get hurt by some of these Pokemon. A lot of the meta kind of counters it a little bit. Zororork. I actually think Zororork's doing pretty well. I can't really put it as high as Dodrio because it is. It doesn't feel as self-reliant, especially as the match goes on. But I think it's actually doing really well as a speedster. Maybe in some environments, it's actually better than Dodrio. But in general, I think those two are sort of you know duking it out for best speedster inside of the game right now. And those are all of our speedsters, so we're moving on to our attackers. All right, let's do Cinderace. Cinderace is good. It's good, not great. It kind of gets eaten up completely by Zacian. I can't put it any higher than A because it's just, it feels rough uh, into Zacian. But that being said, it's good. It's an A presser, does pretty well. You want to give it central area if you can. One of the big disadvantages to a Pokemon like, uh, you know, Cinderace, I'm gonna put Greninja right here, Dragapult, I'm not actually leaving them here. All of these Pokemon feel like they really, really want and need the central area. And there are so many good central area picks right now that I think they all do lose a little bit of value. If I were to sort of shake up these four, and I'll put Duraludon up here in a minute as well, I just think it actually doesn't need central area as bad as these four. Uh, I would put Greninja possibly higher in A+, because of Surf. I think Surf is just such an amazing move you can secure things with it i would probably put dragapult closer to the b tier and then i would put decidueye on it c maybe into zacian it's the worst pokemon in the game i mean it's just so bad it, it's such a nothing gets punished harder than decidueye i swear i love it i don't know maybe it's maybe it outpaces dragapult in some scenarios but here's the thing it can probably do a little more, the Dragapult, with its Spirit Shackle. You can probably do a little more, but you can also get punished a lot harder. So what you've got with this is maybe a higher skill ceiling, 
but a way lower skill floor and just you can just get punished so hard. I'll set it right here in B with Dragapult. Maybe, but boy, it just gets run. And then uh, Duraludon, the thing about Duraludon is it doesn't need central area. These other four kind of do. You you can get away with not playing something in central area. You can get away with playing Elaine Greninja, but it doesn't mean that it isn't starving for experience because it's not in the center. Even the team that we saw run Lane Greninja in uh, the qualifiers over the weekend, they still moved it into the central area afterwards. So it's like... It needs that level of experience. I think Duraludon actually does really well still. I think A tier is fine for it. It actually doesn't need center. You can play it in lane just fine. It works really well because its attack stat is just so unbelievably high. And it has pretty good secure early. Gets its level 5 and then it's actually useful. Unlike sort of the other uh, batch of Pokemon right here. Let's see. Our next... Uh, let's do some of our mages now. I'm just going to start... I'm just going to set them up and we can knock them down, right? So let's set up Mew as a mage... Delphox is a mage. Guardi's a mage. Cram is sort of a hybrid. Uh, Espeon's a mage. Glaceon's kind of a mage. I'll just kind of set up some of these right here. And we can talk about them. So, the mage sort of Pokemon in the game. These are your casters. Your special attack sort of burst damage Pokemon. Um, they are doing pretty well inside the meta right now. And I think Slick Spoon is probably helping a lot of them also. You kind of have to compare all the ones in lane to Mew and now Espeon. So Mew, just as a Pokemon, I think is still so unbelievably useful and difficult to punish that I think is an S tier choice. However, I think Espeon is right up here in the A plus tier. I might be maybe overvaluing it a little, but I, I really don't think so. I think Espeon is crushing it right now. The buffs to it are freaking amazing. And even seeing it competitively, like you see a lot of teams finding huge use out of this Pokemon. It can steal things from really far away. It feels like it has sort of uh, the glow up that Mew has. It just doesn't have the mobility. If it had the mobility of Mew, it would probably outpace Mew somehow. Uh, I say somehow because Mew still has all this crazy stuff. But Espeon's freaking crushing it right now. Delphox, also very, very good. I think it got dinged a little bit inside the recent patch. Um, but in general, I think Delphox is still really crushing it. You're not seeing it competitively right now because it's banned out. I think some sort of bug is going on with it. But I think it's doing well. Guardi also performing very well. I don't think it's at the level of Delphox. But it's really, really good. Gardevoir is doing really well. I think A tier is a super fair place for this Pokemon. The problem with Delphox and Guardi is you really need the central area for them. Uh, you can get away with not having it but their secure isn't amazing however Espeon and Mew can play in path so well that uh, that's just such a huge benefit for them Glaceon I think is still amazing it might even be S honestly like Glaceon's really good and it's actually a decent Zashi encounter Icy Wind Glaceon um a might be fair too. In fact, all of the Sylvies are, are doing well. A plus, excuse me. I'm going to put Sylveon up here, maybe closer to A. Maybe Sylveon is nudged out a little bit by them. So the thing with Sylveon is it's more of a... It's kind of a brawler special attacker in a weird way. It has really high HP, really high stats uh, in that respect. And it's kind of up in the enemy's face a lot where the others get to be a little more protected. But it... You know, all the Eevees, they evolve at four. They do extremely well. I think e all the Eevees are doing well here. I'm going to say A plus for these two and probably A for Sylveon right here. And uh, let's see. Cram. Cram's good. Weird, but good. It feels like an A. I think Surf Cram is not that good, but Dive Cram is still doing really well. It's a very technical build to pull off, but if you're good with Cramorant, you could make it work. I was playing it the other day. I don't have my finesse on it anymore because uh, I just really have not played that much Cram lately, but it actually does pretty well. And anything that can really get away from a bad situation isn't too bad into this Zacian meta right now. A9 and Pika are fine. They're fine. I don't know. C, they're fine. Maybe B. I, I just... They can't move. Uh, unlike something like Espeon, they don't have the secure of Espeon. They all can't move, but they don't have the secure or stuns of Espeon the same way. You have a little bit with A9 and Pikachu's Unite move are good. They're in this weird 
sort of support attacker category and you really can't have too many of them and if i have to compare them directly to another support attacker espion i think espion crushes both of these pokemon right now i just think it's way way better the range that it can play at is unbelievable they're fine if you want to argue with me and say b fair enough but i don't know neither of them are really setting the world on fire right now and then we have venusaur our final pokemon for this tier list venusaur i think it's still doing pretty well it might even be a plus i think giga drain pedal dance is still really crushing it maybe it's a i don't know it fights well and comfy actually really you know puts this pokemon up there so you gotta think there are certain pokemon where even with a comfy on them it doesn't change too much like it doesn't change too much if Dragapult has a comfy. It's nice, it keeps it alive a little more, but it doesn't change too much. Venusaur, a Pokemon that already sort of plays like a regenerating tank style Pokemon, I think does really, really well with comfy right now. So there is our Zacian tier list. I gotta say, in a lot of ways, this is, for me, I just, this is the most blech meta that we have had inside this game almost ever. And the thing that's toughest about it is we've got one Pokemon that's phenomenally broken and then one Pokemon comfy that sits with a phenomenally broken Pokemon and lets it continue to be phenomenally broken. But I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments. What do you think is going on in the meta right now? What did I get right? What did I get wrong? As always, you know, you can comment with each other, respond to each other, just be cool about it. Obviously, a lot of this is based on opinion, but I also take into account what's happening in tournaments. I take into account what's happening with win rates and things like that. But in general, I think this is about where the game is shaking out right now. There are a ton of Pokemon, the B, C, and D tier that are good, but are just full on outshined by other things and most of the stuff up in the a plus s and zashian tier are really where it's at inside the game right now all right and now we do this and the big thought again is there really is only one pokemon that can counter zashian that's zara aura zara aura is just insane right now you can't hit it during wild charge so you have to have something to counter zashian that's what our s tier is Slowbro, hold it in place. Uh, Trevenant, Pain Split, Woodhammer. And then you have Zara Aura, Wild Charge, this horrible Pokemon. You can take it down if you Wild Charge it. Uh, other than that, Charizard's still at the bottom of the barrel. Nothing special really happening there. I hope you enjoyed this tier list. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And I will see you all next time. Mm -hmm.